Hi everyone, my name is Kate Robertson from the Geological Survey of South Australia and today I'm going to be talking to you about the electrical resistivity structure of the Delamarian origin lithosphere using magnetotellurics or MT. And I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors who contributed to this work and are listed on this slide. So the figure on the right shows the area that I'm talking about when I say the Delamarian origin outlined in black. And if we look at the main figure outlined in yellow is the area that we at the Geological Survey are focusing on as part of our MinEx CRC collaboration. And I encourage you to check out Tom Weiser's talk and he's really talking about why we at the survey have chosen to focus on this area and the drilling that we'll be doing as part of the National Drilling Initiative. So the two part, there's sort of two parts to this talk where we've done a 3D model of OSLAMP, Australian Lithospheric Architecture Magnetotelluric Project, OSLAMP long period MT data looking at the whole lithosphere uh, using the sites, MT sites that are shown in these, with these black triangles, so uh, uh, 405 MT sites. And then we've also done an infill broadband MT transect, which I'll talk about as well, and integrate this with da other data sets and uh, try and work out what this all means. The tectonic events that have led to the Delamarian origin are outlined nicely in John Foden's recent paper that was published in Gondwana Research earlier this year. So beginning around 800 MA with the breakup of Rodinia, we had the development of passive, a passive margin and sedimentation from Neoproterozoic through to early Cambrian times. At around 520 MA, the existence of bononitic magmatism suggests that that was the timing for the initiation of subduction. This was a, then we had the trench retreat uh, in an oceanward direction into Victoria, which you can see here. And then moving to 515 MA was really the initiation, the commencement of the actual subduction. And with the trench retreat, this subduction started in Victoria, and you can see uh, arc magmatism in, in Victoria with the Stavely arc, and I'll show in a later slide where we're also seeing arc signatures. And then you had mag further magmatism um, occurring as well with the result of fluids um, moving up from the subducting plate. And then 495 to 470 MA, we had the break off or tear of subducting slab and A-type granitic magmatism, which we see in the Pathway Ridge in South Australia, really marks the conclusion of um, subduction. And so the question, you know, we're hidden beneath the Murray Basin in South Australia in the area that I've shown you that we were focusing on. But the question is, so where do we lie in the subduction system? But, but also, you might be wondering why do we care? Well, subduction systems, subduction zones are commonly associated with many different types of mineral systems, um, which are all shown on this slide. In particular, two that we're interested in are porphyry copper deposits and, and VMS deposits. And Tom goes into this in a bit more detail in his talk. So as I mentioned, the question is where are we? Uh, on the left, you can see the Delamarian origin region outlined again, and you can see we've got, um, and I've also shown on the right, just in yellow, the areas where we have arc signatures and in green, where there's more sort of black arc signatures. But uh, the Stavely project uh, that was done by the Victorian Survey and Geoscience Australia has um, shown that there's arc magmatism uh, in the Stavely zone and there's porphyry deposits with the for example, the Thursday's Gossen deposit. And up in the Coonabri belt, we have distinctive signs of um, arc signatures. When we come into, and also back arc as well, when we come into the area down here, uh, near, just uh, south of the Kernamona province, we've got the Loch Lily Cars belt and the Renmark trough. And there's evidence that there is uh, arc, back arc signatures, but we really don't know enough about the area. And that's why we're focusing on the area as well for part of the drilling initiative. You can see the location where we collected the broadband transect there, where you're going from the neoproterozoic rocks of the Nakara Arc into the presumably mostly Cambrian rocks um, within the Loch Lily Cars Belt. And on the right, again, if we look at where these uh, regions that were modified by arcs are, you can see that it, um, it's really resistive um, in basically all of these regions. And I've got the question mark where this is really where we're trying to answer 
where, are, where were we in the subduction system? And this high resistivity uh, continues to greater depths at 100 kilometers. We're still generally seeing re high resistivities, uh, probably associated with um, extensive uh, magmatism that's occurred in the areas, high temperature events that have kind of erased any signatures and also left the mantle depleted. The figure on the left here uh, shows the fast axes of Rayleigh waves uh, shown in red um, and also some sort of uh, structures that they've identified in their data as well shown in blue, um, for example, the Lachlan Orocline model here. Um, but we're more interested in this area over here and again this is sort of their identified kind of margin region convergent. Uh, what we see here is that the, um, the fast axis of anisotropy basically aligns with these um, magnetic trends. So this is over tilt filtered magnetics. And you can see that right around here, we've got this break in magnetics. Um, you can see there's a kind of a, all of a sudden the anisotropy isn't uh, really showing there. And so that's where we've got the Coonabri belt up here with arc signatures and then the Loch Lily cars belt down here, but we also think there's arc signatures. So um, this, it looks like there's been something significant to kind of affect that area. And uh, Alison Kirkby published a paper earlier this year in Earth, Planets and Space on her OSLAM models across New South Wales and Victoria, which I recommend you check out. But in her models, and we also see this in a, these models over the larger area, you can see uh, this conductor that kind of breaks through that, that area as well, right where the anisotropy uh, is diminishing as well in the velocity. And again, now if we're looking at um, velocity in a different way, we're now looking at the relative P wave velocities where the green regions are relatively fast regions and the yellow are relatively slow. We've got this uh, really distinct kind of margin between the Nakara arc here, and then we've got this uh, fast region uh, coming up alongside it. And this is where we've got this really resistive uh, trend coming through here. And again, kind of where we've got this uh, jutting out area, that's where we saw the break in the magnetics, the conductor that was shown in Allison's and then these models as well. And so then moving on to our high resolution new MT data that we've acquired to get more detail in this area where we've got the Loch Lily cars belt kind of uh, lots of interesting features happening. We collected uh, 63 broadband MT sites at 1.5 kilometer spacing. So the OSLAMP sites are 55 kilometer spacing. So we've got a huge increase in resolution occurring here. You can see the site locations here. It was great fun going out and field work, which we only did in October, which was significantly postponed due to COVID, but uh, it was great to get these three smiling geologists out to show them that geophysics is really just uh, digging and uh, rolling out cables. Um, and we also had lots of other helpers as well. Uh, we also made sure we did fit in some time for geologists, for geology to keep the geologists happy too. Um, uh, we've got some mud maps and checking out some quartz veins. So looking at the data, so as I mentioned, we acquired this data in October, so it still is early days for modeling, uh, but we have done, we found that the MT data were mainly three dimensional, at least in the Northwestern part of the profile. So we did 3D inversions of the data, also 2D as well to compare. So on the left, what you'll see was the OSLAMP model. So just using the 55 kilometer data, 55 kilometer space data, this is the model that we got down to 50 kilometers. And now with the much newer, uh, the 1.5 kilometer space data, we see much higher resolution and these uh, structures in the near surface that were just previously one big blob. Um, and now this is looking at the 2D inversion that we've done. This was using GeoTools and you can see generally kind of the same features are coming out in the near surface, but we have this more conductive uh, kind of source region here, which may be um, slightly, uh, offset from the profile, which is what we're getting the hint from in the 3D models of the, of the line. Um, but nevertheless, we have these pathways that are coming up towards the surface. And we've got um, the Anabama Pluton, which you can see in the magnetics here. Um, and that's this structure here uh, that's really resistive. And as we move to the southeastern end of the profile, you can see it's really high resistivity. We've got um, Cambrian sediments, probably volcanics as well. 
Also, there was new gravity data required. Uh, so Philip Heath from the Geological Survey and his team collected gravity data at 1.5 kilometer spaced intervals. And you can see the uh, significant increase in the number of data points that we have in the area, uh, where the orange were the pre-2020 sites and the blue were the post-20, were the ones that were required in 2020. And you can see the features coming out that, you know, for example, this gravity low that we wouldn't have seen before with the um, earlier data. And the reason some of them are slightly offset is that they were um, not quite on the profile. We were just picked out the nearest sites. And if we uh, look at that across the distance rather than just data points, you can see the Anabama Hill coming out with this uh, low gravity anomaly and then this sort of gra uh, gradual increase um, as we're moving to the southeast of the profile. And taking a look at the broadband MT transect in greater detail, so the top slice here shows the top two and a half kilometres and the bottom shows the top 0.5 kilometres, so red's conductive, blue's resistive. And you can see that um, we're mapping out the conductive sediments of the Murray Basin really quite well. And if you've checked out Tom's talk, um, in our drilling we're targeting areas with cover no more than 350 metres thickness. And these show that um, you know, it's probably around 250 metres at most. So that's uh, good signs for the area. We also have um, depth modelling that was being done by uh, George Guthers at the survey as well. And lastly, I just wanted to show a video of the 3D and the 2D models and how they uh, kind of tie in together. So this is looking at a 40 kilometre depth slice where um, we've also overlain uh, various mineral deposits and what you can see is in general these tend to occur in the areas where we've got high conductivity or a gradient um, kind of at the edge of these high conductivity features. I've just turned on ISO surfaces so the pink regions are really conductive less than 50 ohm meters and then the blue are really resistive more than 2000 ohm meters and you can see uh, the MT profile here in white um, and where that lies in relation to this Nacker arc conductor where we've got this region that's been weakened from all the rifting that's occurred um, with the breakup of Rodinia. And if we zoom in now and you turn off the resistive isosurface, you really see that we're transitioning there. And now if we have a look at the profile over the um, basement geology map that Tom Weiss um, put together earlier this year, you can see uh, we're going from the Nacker arc here down into the Lockley cars. And I've just got in purple the drilling region um, there, which I'll turn off and then we'll take a look, um, a closer look at the actual MT data beneath it. And you can see um, the small green dots um, in the, on the profile area, are the areas of um, prospects in the area or have been at some point in time. So if we take a side look, um, the ISO surfaces that are on here are 10 ohm meters, so really conductive. You can see these pathways. Um, so I've cropped this at a depth of 30 kilometers. Uh, coming up kind of at these um, regions here, we've got this big pathway on the edge of the Anabama Pluton. Now I've turned on 200 ohm meters. Um, so still relatively conductive. You can see um, as we spin around how these pathways come up to the surface. Um, and within, you know, the Loch Lily Cars Belt, you see this um, quite conductive sediment package and also conductive kind of deeper into there. Um, and now if we turn on the really resistive regions um, beneath the Anabama Pluton, see that it's, um, uh, yeah, really quite resistive. And now I've turned on uh, ISO surfaces from the OSLAMP 3D model where the OSLAMP really has a strength in looking at the lithosphere, where uh, in the mantle and you know, mid to shallow crust, whereas the broadband is sort of crustal imaging. You can see the deep conductive source and then the conductive pathways. So there's lots of people to acknowledge for these projects. Um, so thank you. Hopefully I haven't missed anyone and feel free to get in touch if you've got any questions. Thank you. <laughs>